Okay, hi. I was asked to do a tutorial on how I color my videos, so that's what this is. Um, so when I got the request, I assume you mean the bright color effects I do when I edit. So that's what I'm going to show you here. Um, just remember, it's not a set process, so there's lots of different tr um, effects you can use. I'm just going to run through all of them really basically. But I hope it's helpful, so let's get cracking it. As you can see up there, I put together a small clip I'll use to show you how the effects work. Um, it looks like this. It's really basic, just the really beautiful art, which I haven't done any effects on, and then the backgrounds and little effects which I generated all in Vegas. I haven't done any colouring yet, and that's why I'm going to show you how to do it right now, so it'll look a little less boring, in my opinion anyway. <laughs> okay, so the first thing you do is you colour correct the actual images that you use. And the first thing I always do is the easiest way to make the colours pop out, and that's just to play with the contrast. Um, so you go to your video effects and your brightness contrast tab to do this, and you just drag one of them onto the image, and you increase the contrast slider, um, so that colours clash against each other and they pop out more. Sometimes this can make your image a bit too dark, so you can adjust the brightness slider occasionally, and it should look good as long as the Contrast slider is always higher than the brightness slider. You'll always have a nicely contrasting image. You might not notice a big difference, but um, it does make the colors stand out more. You can see as I sort of unclick and click the effect here, the really subtle difference. Yeah, it, I like doing this because it makes the colors stronger. And this is actually important when you do overlays and stuff, which I'll get to a little later. So I'm just doing the same thing to the other image, and it's also a good way to sort of unify the colours between multiple images, as you can see here. So the next thing I play with is strengthening the whites of the image, or making the lighter bits a bit more white. And I do this with glow effect. Again, you just drag one of these on, and you turn the glow percent, the first slider, to absolute zero, so that'll keep the white on the image. And then you play with the other two sliders, the suppression and the intensity, until you sort of get a slight white light over your image, the lighter bits fit. I usually leave the colour as white, except if you want to give it a bit of a light of a different colour, you can change the colour as well. Again, it's sort of subtle and you can see that again as I click on and off. You don't want to go too white, that's blinding, but, but I do think it looks a little better. So yeah, that's the glow effect. Okay, so enough messing around with contrast, how about we get into editing the colours a bit. I don't actually work with colours much, but one thing I do is change the tint on individual art. Okay, so to do this you use the colour balance effect. So in this case I want to make this picture a bit more purple than the pink it is, so it matches up with the other one. So you put the effect on and you play with the sliders a bit, so you just use common logic of colours for this, or just play with them until you get it right, like for example red and blue make purple, so um, I put my red and blue sliders higher than the green slider. Um, you can pick between the highlights, midtones, or shadows, depending on whether you want the lighter colors to change or the darker colors. Um, yeah, just pick whichever one you want. That sort of depends on what you're doing. And usually I leave the preserved luminosity checked, otherwise you end up with really flat contrast. Anyway, as you can see, the picture's a bit more purple than the original pink it would have. Um, well, then I'm going to do the same to the other one, so make that one a bit more purple than blue, so again, they're unified. Yeah, that's the main reason I use this one, to, if I have a theme in terms of colours and I want all of my pictures to sort of have the same colour tint, then I use this effect. I don't use it much, but yeah, that's what it's for. Okay, so the last thing I do with the actual pictures in themselves is the play with the saturation. And saturation is just either bright colours or dim colours, so grey or like flat out brightest colours. So to do this you go to the HSL adjust tab, and again just drag one of them on, and move the saturation slider. Um, the more to the left it is, the dimmer your colours on the right, bright colours. It's a really simple tool. So this has now got max saturation, you can see the colours are really bright. But um, on the other end of the scale, uh, you'll see that it makes it grey. So what you can do is you can key point with this. This is something I do. Um, and you can start your picture out as grey, then move to later key points, then you can make it bright. So you can mix it up and you can have the colours change within the video themselves. And so I'm going to do that same process to the other one. I usually leave the other two sliders, the add to hue and the luminosity, the same. And just tweak with the saturation here. 
Um, make sure you don't go too bright. Sometimes if you maximize slider too much, your image can go a bit pixely. But you'll know as you go through the video, so it should be alright. And you can make a completely grayscale, if you want to make a completely grayscale video, you can just add the m minimize the saturation for everything. If you want to go for something really bright, just do the other, or you can do the key pointing trick I just showed you, and you can make a change as you go along. There's heaps you can do with this tool. So yeah. That's it for like editing the individual images. Now I'm going to show you how to do overlays, which are effects that you put on top, which affect the colors of the whole video rather than image by image, yeah? Okay, so the first thing I do is something which I call a toner, which I'll explain as I go. So basically what you do is you create a new layer and you go to your media generators and you drag on a gradient. Um, and what you do is you get something that's a soft gradient between two similar colors. I usually use grays just to show the example. And you change your layer blending mode here to overlay. And what this does is it creates a slight tone which goes over your whole video. Um, you'll be able to see it now. Can you see that on the right side of my video? I mean on the left side, sorry. It's a bit lighter. And then on the right side, it's a bit darker. And this is something that's constant. It, it's not strong, but it adds a sort of metallic sheen to the video. If you use grey anyway. You don't have to use grey though. I mean, you can go for colours if you want. Um, and say I want to make give this video not just a metallic sheen, but a pink sheen. Um, so let's just set this back to normal so I can show you what I'm changing it to. Um, let's say I want to go for a pink. For a pink. So yep, just change my colours to pink. Make sure you keep the colours flat. If you make these too bright, your video will just... You won't be able to see the underlying images because you just have like a blob of pink. Um, and yeah, that's all there is to that. Make sure your colours... Don't contrast with each other too much. Just two things with this, you don't have to use a gradient necessarily, you can use a flat colour if you don't want it to sort of change from side to side. You can also set the layer blending mode to darken for a darker effect, but that only works if your overlay is light. But yeah, those are some alternatives. And yeah, that's that for your toner. I think it gives the video a bit of mood, but yeah. I'm not okay, and the other thing you create with overlay is circular lights. Now to do this, you make another new layer, and to do circular lights, you create a round gradient. Now, with the round gradient, just because it's the light, you set the outside to transparent. So you just have a little white, a little coloured circle. And try and make the like centre small, so you don't have like, a completely opaque centre. Just mess around the thing, and then you put the light wherever you want it to go. See how it looks like a bit of a light? So, oops. Um, now, you can change the center of the light to whatever color you want. Um, and then move it wherever you want. And there, you've got a light. But you might think it's a bit strong, you can't read the text under it, but that's okay. You will go to your blending modes and you'll change it to lighten. And voila. You've got a soft light which shows up especially well in black. You can, and just one last note on that, you don't have to use gradients for the light, you can, if you have a light um, texture, like a light overlay, which is animated, which you can download if you, like just YouTube search um, video overlays and you get something like this, which serves the same purpose. Can you see that it's got like light in the middle and anything with a black background will work actually. Um, and you just do the same thing. You lay it over the video with your blending mode set to lighten. Yeah. And there you go. That's that. Um, just another alternative. And this one also moves as the video goes along. So it gives you a bit of movement if you feel your video looks a bit static. Yeah, and that's another really pretty thing you can do. And yeah, it's exactly the same technique. Okay. You can use both if you want, which is what I'm doing here. Anyway, that's all to, there is to different colouring techniques I use. And I'm about to run out of time. So you want to see what the finished process looks like? And here we go, that's the finished little clip with colour adjustment, which I've just taught you how to do. So I hope that was helpful and you guys learned something. And just leave it in the comments and send me a message or whatever if you want to request. I have a question or want to request another tutorial and that's that. Thanks for watching.